Good evening. <laughs> Impromptu soil blocking seeding live, which admittedly might not go well because I feel like if I try and do a live and then also seed, <laughs> things get uh, lost in the shuffle. Uh, in the meantime, I'll show you what I'm doing. I am taking my Swift Blocker Mini 27 and I'm putting the dibbles back in. The other day I seeded a bunch of large seeds in the blocks and I put them in before pressing them out. So I removed the dibbles before I did that. When it comes to a Swift Blocker, they have lots of different models. This is the Mini 27. It does 27 one and a half inch blocks. I like it because I have carpal tunnel syndrome. I also have arthritis and the mode, the mechanism of action is so much easier, both in filling it and pressing it out on my wrists and my thumb than say a traditional soil blocker, but there's nothing wrong with these. These are great, uh, but for the amount of soil blocks that I make and how it feels, I prefer this. It is admittedly an investment, but this is, this is solid. This is going, I could pass this down to my kids. This will last a lifetime and then some. So I'm gonna put the dibbles back in because tonight I'm gonna to seed some small stuff like monarch nectar plants, like native monarch nectar plants, some Las Vegas mix gomfrina, also known as globe amaranth. I've never grown that before, I'm very excited. I ordered Las Vegas mix, from Swallowtail Seeds. So if you're looking for interesting flower varieties that you, you know that you don't see everywhere, Swallowtail Seeds is a great source. I get a lot of my flowers from them. I get the majority of my vegetable seeds from Pine Tree and MI Gardener. And then I get my microgreen seeds from True Leaf Market. Those are my favorites so far. I have not tried every seed company, so I'm sure there are other wonderful ones out there. Those are just my personal favorites. Almost got all the dibbles back in, which create like a nice little depression in which to put the seed in the soil block. Hopefully I did not lose any of these. I was apparently carrying them around in my pocket all day. That's a recipe for losing something. I also, I don't know if you guys saw, so I did a reel recently about a soil block recipe that I put together and then I did a reel today about saying it's not a good recipe. It had too much fertilizer in it and the blocks are growing mold. I, I still think the, the plants that grow in them will be totally fine, but, oh, I forgot my wine. Dang it. Um, but I'd rather there not be mold. So tonight I was doing a different recipe and then messed it up while I was doing it because I ran out of Coco Loco. So my recipe tonight is gonna be another experiment, even though that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go back to my Coco Loco, pit moss, green sand recipe that has worked really well. Tonight, it's gonna to be equal parts sifted Coco Loco to pit moss and then half a cup of green sand because that's, that's like all I had. Oh, small garden life. You're talking about sprinkling cinnamon on the blocks to prevent like the algae in the mold. And that works great. You know what's super interesting? Maybe not interesting, weird. The mold is only on the sides of the blocks. There's none on the top where I have the vermiculite. I don't know. Maybe I'll just try and sprinkle some cinnamon over all of them. I use worm castings and bone meal in my seed starting mix. Well, that sounds like a great thing. I do think though that I put too much different fertilizers in mine, especially since the pit moss has cow manure and poultry waste. And the Coco Loco has uh, bat guano, worm castings, crushed oyster shells, dolomite lime, and one other like fertilizer ingredient. So my adding compost and worm castings and insect press was just too much. It was too much fertilizer and hence the mold. Brianna, I forgot Gomfrina has awful germination when I sewed it, so I'd strongly recommend sewing many per block. Thank you, I will do that. Also, I have two of these, and I'm thinking I left the one I wanna use inside along with my wine. Super annoying. Okay, 
I made my mix earlier in the day. So here's the accidental mix. This is the equal parts sifted Coco Loco with pit moss and green sand. And I feel like it's already dried out a little bit. I have a little bit more water. Brianna has like a good analogy of making it the texture of mashed potatoes. So that's what I'm going for. If you guys don't follow Brianna, she's beautifully bemused on Instagram. She's an outstanding follow. Okay, I feel like this is pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and try it. All right, here's the Swift Blocker base. I'm gonna go ahead and just wiggle it down in here and really pack it in while it's in this container. I'm gonna take the excess off the top. I can feel when I push down in some of the individual cells, some of them are really packed in, some are not. Just taking my fingers and going like this. Sorry, right, I'm gonna add some more. Okay. Then, I'm gonna transfer it to this. I'm just gonna pick it up. Put it like that. you guys can see. And use the scraper to really pack it down. I always transfer my soil blocks after I press them out. So I like them extremely firm. This is feeling really good. All right, something important to note, if you are using a Swift blocker is, all right, so there's the sides of the Swift blocker and then there's this um, recessed grid you don't want any soil above the recessed grid. You don't fill it to the top of these sides. You have it only to the recessed grid. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do, oh, almost dropped it. Okay. Is I can take this that has the holes and I can lay it on top and seed it. But before I do that, actually, a towel would have been really nice, is I'm going to take the top. I'm gonna to press it down just to make some of the indentations where the dibbles are. So I want to do some of my monarch native nectar plants. That's all milkweed, milkweed, milkweed. Ooh, Indian blanket is a good one. Asters. What are you? Oh, Rondo penstemon, mountain mint, rose crown obedient plant. Tango Agastache, Bergamo Bee Balm, Anise Hyssop, Violet Gay Feather. Ah, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can do nine. We're gonna do at least two of the Gomfrina. So I got seven left. We'll do Gay Feather, Bee Balm, Obedient Plant, Aster. Got three more Indian blanket. We'll start. Maybe we'll do a bunch of the Gomfrina. All right. So now we're ready to seed. Yeah. Next project. 
My gomprina is also from Swallowtail. I'm going to dump it out on my little so do this tray. And then I'm able to just, I'm going to put two per hole, slide them into this hole. Perfect. And I lift it up and I move it to the next one. Two for you. Two for you. Two for you. When you're pushing forward, one. Two in that one. Two in that one. All right. I'm gonna take a quick pause. Make sure I write this down. So I've got Gomprina. in the first three. It doesn't make for a very exciting live to make sure that you're labeling correctly. Okay, let's do some apricot aster. The point of these monarch nectar flowers is that you plant milkweed for the monarchs to lay their eggs because that's the only thing the baby caterpillars, the caterpillars will eat is the milkweed. But the butterflies need nectar plants as a food source. So in addition to milkweed, you need to have nectar plants that the monarch butterflies like. And I'm focused on planting, trying to plant natives. However, I think I realized I accidentally bought some stuff that is not native. I mean, you just do the best you can, right? All right, I'm gonna put these on my little scraper. And then I'm just going to I'm going to slide two right there, two right there, two right there, put a couple extra. Okay. Next is rose crown obedient plant. Many of these I have never grown before in my life. I used the book A Hundred Plants to Feed, or maybe it's a that yeah, a hundred plants to feed the monarch the butterfly. I used that book to help me figure out what I wanted to buy. And then I went on the Prairie Moon Nursery website to figure out what is native to my area. Put them on my little cedar. Ah. I'm putting two seeds per soil block because I can thin them out later or try <laughs> to transplant them. That doesn't work so well with soil blocks. Okay, what's next? Bergamo bee balm. In addition to feeding the monarchs, all of these things I'm planting will also benefit all pollinators. Shoot, what was this? I've already, nope, obedient plant. Y'all, I gotta write this down, crap. Okay, obedient plant. Aster was number four. Okay, six is going to be the Bergamo Bee Balm. Oh no! I guess I, I used all of that in my winter sewing. Let's take that out. Okay, let's do the Gay Feather. Floriston Violet Gay Feather. I, have, I am creating this year, I used two of the Forever Garden Bed metal raised beds, the three foot by six foot configuration. I did, I did two of those in my side yard and they are currently full of 
have nectar plants for the monarchs. And I'm even going to, I have already registered to be a certified monarch way station. And I'm super excited. I'm growing so much milkweed this year and I am giving it to all my neighbors for them to plant also because I feel like if all my neighbors have it planted in their yard and I have a ton of it, like hopefully that'll be great. And I'm also going to be working with a children's camp where we're gonna do soil blocking and I'm going to have already started milkweed and soil blocks for the kids to plant and they're gonna start some seeds and soil blocks that we're gonna to make together. And then each kid, I'm gonna take them, I've been growing so much milkweed, I'm gonna take each kid a milkweed seedling to take home to plant in their own yard. I think that's so fun. It's here in Charlotte and it's called like Make Grow CLT for Charlotte. Okay, now I'm doing Indian blanket. I'm going to do two rows of that. These are seeds I saved from my own plants last year. And one just accidentally dropped over there. Get out. Okay, I've got one more space left. Hmm. Let's do more gumfrina. Gumfrina. Since Brianna says the germination is so low. the one that already opened. many seeds. Okay. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put vermiculite on the swift blocker grid before I press out the blocks. What that does is it keeps, like if you add vermiculite after, which is fine, you can do that, um, it kind of falls in between the blocks and creates um, like it obstructs the channels that water will flow when you're trying to bottom water the blocks. So that is a reason to put the vermiculite in ahead of time. Okay, this is Josh's Frogs Vermiculite Incubation Media, 10 quarts. I got it off of Amazon. Uh, it says it's medium, um, like the fineness of it is medium, but I, th I consider it to be very fine. It's super fine because I spill it everywhere. Oh. It's very hard to find a proper camera angle <laughs> for you guys to see what I'm doing. Gonna sprinkle the vermiculite over the top of the blocks because it helps retain moisture. Soil blocks have a tendency to dry out so much more than like anything sewn in a pot. So the vermiculite helps with that. Okay. So this is what it looks like before I'm gonna press it out. All the seeds are already in it. Oh my god. Which way was I holding it? Y'all, I think I've got it all mixed up in terms of what is what now. This is why I try not to sow seeds on lives. I'm not very good at it. Oh well. All right. Now, as opposed to 
a traditional soil blocker, which has, a, has springs, um, and um, the mechanism of action is to push down to expel the blocks out the bottom. You also can't seed with a traditional soil blocker before you push it out. So this is the mode of action of a traditional one, push down. With a swift blocker, the mode of action is to actually pull the bottom part up. That's what we're gonna do right now. Thought they look good. <sighs> Let's hope I have it orientated the right way. And I was gonna move them to this cafeteria tray that I got from Ikea. And the reason I'm not pressing them out onto the cafeteria tray from Ikea is because it is a little bit, a little bit too long. There are trays that you can purchase, I think from Gardener's Workshop uh, that are the exact right length. I just am cheap and didn't wanna do that. And I find that the, the mix I use and the way I fill mine, they, they stay very stable, so I'm not worried about moving them. I say that now. Okay. Let me label the tray. I just used some, I saw, the, I saw Brianna. Y'all, Brianna does a lot of soil blocking, so I've been referencing her a lot. Uh, she takes tape which I have an extremely old roll of that's so annoying. And she takes tape to label her soil blocks, which I like. Oh. This may not work. I might have to do this later. Okay. All right, so then I'm just going to like, they're so easy. I'm just gonna move them onto the tray. And when I do this, of course, I can give them a little extra room if I want, so they're not so tight. And it looks like I didn't do the best job of pressing them in. Some of them are coming apart a bit. That's my fault. Yeah, I didn't really push the soil down as much as I should have because I was trying to hurry. But things will still grow just fine in it. Some of them are so perfect. I've noticed that if I let my soil blocks sit for a little bit before trying to move them, they move much easier. Okay. And now I know what nothing is. That's about typical. Labeling is my kryptonite. All right, let's see what questions we have. Move you closer. These will go um, underneath something for a humidity dome. I'll probably use compostable plastic wrap. Started paper pots this weekend and got five trays made. Love paper and soil blocks. Awesome farmhouse 1921. 
Brianna, I never knew Gumfrina had terrible germination. Okay. Jades are way easier, but I love the system. I don't know what jades are. Rephrase, cuttings are easier, but love it for seeds. Well, that's two very different things. <laughs> Brianna, thank you. Yes, my balancing was quite impressive, I agree. Okay, if you have any questions about soil blocks, feel free to drop them in the comments or the question box. Yes. Scott, I'm very excited about the way station. I have the whole, I paid for to, to get like a metal sign and like, I'm like, way station number 10,571. <laughs> like I'm registered. Um, so I'm super excited. I need to hang my sign. I am now inspired to plant milkweed. Any advice? Yes. Go to Prairie Moon Nursery and look up their milkweed and then um, click their uh, like plant map. So you can see where that milkweed is native and then you'll know which milkweed to plant where you live. A lot of it is going to say it needs cold stratification. If, if you're at the point where like it's time to plant, I recommend throwing it in the fridge for just like a couple days and going ahead and trying it because it's worth it for the like $3 pack of seeds, even if it doesn't work out. Um, I, in years past, I have not cold stratified and I've still had germination. So. I, I, I recommend you get milkweed that's native to your area. Uh, common milkweed, even if it's native, just so you know, I, think, I believe it spreads underground and can be a bit unruly, so that you might wanna put in a raised bed or a prairie area. And I can just do that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Brianna, rewatch it to see if you turned it. I don't remember you turning it. It's all, it's all messed up now. There's, there's no, <laughs> everything's just, it's, yeah, like nothing's in a line anymore. Like this is, this is basically how I do things. We'll just see what is, I mean, I mean I'll be able to identify it like once it flowers, right? <laughs> and Brianna, I feel like you have done videos where you are able to maintain the labeling. I cannot... I cannot do it. I can't. Also, this is not uh, the best representa representation of them holding their shape. If I take my time and I really make sure that it's pressed down and I'm not worried about taking too long on a video, those blocks, they hold their shape. <sighs> Looks like sushi rolls. I usually hear dirt brownies. I haven't heard the sushi rolls before. Hey, Kate. Um, need love bake. I will post the live if you're interested in, in rewatching it. Don't worry that you missed a bunch. Oh, you're using soil blocks for the first time this year. That's so exciting. Will you make a composting live soon? I'm composting this year. Hidden Airy Farm. I actually did one yesterday and it's posted on YouTube and my IG. Okay. I think that's it for the questions. I'm gonna go inside and like sort of label them. I mean, look how good this one is. Look how good that is. Like when you do it right, that's what it looks like. So good. When you hurry and you don't do it right, you might be missing a little on the bottom, but it's still gonna be just fine. All right. Good night. Blue.